Hello YouTube, welcome to this next part of this uh, series here. Uh, I'm just going to show you quickly how I bring the model from Moto into Alias Speedform so I can convert it to NURBS Geometry and bring it into Alias uh, to kind of trim up some of the geometry, add graphics, add cut lines and detail it out and stuff like that. So the first thing you want to do is grab all the items that you want to uh, convert and then I'm just going to right click export selected layers and change this to wavefront obj and hit ok and then we'll choose a file location um, I've already got this one saved out you can name it whatever you want and then we'll go from there uh, and then we'll open up speedform here I'm using uh, 2018 so I haven't actually uh, change any settings. So the first thing you're going to want to do um, is hit File Import, and what it'll tell you is you need to change, turn off the design history, pretty much. So you'll come up to. So if you're not able to import, um, that this is the reason why. So you'll come up here, and hit Preferences and Alias Speed Form, and then turn this to Do Not Capture Design History. Hit Apply. Hit OK. Um, so once you do that, you'll probably have to restart Speedform for it to take effect. So we'll just come up and open this up again. Uh, so now when you do it, you'll hit. So once you find your file, click it, hit open, and you might not see anything depending on the scaling uh, you have your export settings set to. You might not see anything there, so I'll just hit the home up in the top right there and it will bring everything in and this uses the same um, you can actually change your mouse configuration but this uses the same keyboard shortcuts as uh, alias for that so it's a uh, shift alt left mouse button middle mouse button and right mouse button um, and there is a way to change that in the settings but I'm not going to go over that uh, too much there's a lot more uh, in detailed videos out there uh, that show this stuff uh, so I'm just going to show you what I do to convert this to NURBS. So you'll see here in the tree, it comes in as a body, a mesh mesh file here. That's what this little tessellated yellow cylinder looks like. And then I'm just going to right click. And oops, once we, sorry, I'm going to click on it. It's going to turn blue. Then I'll right click and hit convert. And what you're doing is pretty much converting this selection, this mesh body, to a new body. So it should default to that, and then you'll just hit OK, and we'll let that do some thinking. And there you go. That's it converted to a T-spline surface. So Speedform uses uh, T-splines. It's very similar to subdivision modeling, but it is live, uh, I guess, NURBS calculations. Um, and it does some stuff with uh, kind of uh, T-intersections. I don't really have many in this model, but actually here there's a bunch. Uh, but that's going to be a creased edge. So the main reason I'm doing this, um, converting it through Speedform, is so I can do that creased edge operation. So you'll notice in Moto here, when I have these selected and go over to my um, weight map visualization, if you don't see this here, uh, you probably need to come in and select this subdivision under your lists. That will show you your uh, vertex map. Um, weighting so all those red lines are the edge weighting that I applied in Moto. So I'm just going to reselect all these lines and use the crease tool in Speedform. It's a little bit of a tedious task, uh, but I find it's the best way to get hard edges uh, on some of these character lines. Uh, so I'm just going to double click this middle here um, just because I know off the top of my head that that is. Uh, a creased line and then I'm going to go and select this edge here so I'm going to select two lines and then hit P and that will select the rest of the loop and then I'll come here and do the same thing I'll just want to do this a couple times uh, that selected that entire loop around there I'll just do this a couple times uh, just to show you the process and then I'll skip to uh, the end of the video where I've done all these because it'll be a bit tedious doing this. It shouldn't take too long, maybe a good 10-15 minutes to do this depending on how many crease edges you have. But anyway, once you have those lines selected that you want to add a crease to, we come up to refine and hit crease edge 
and we'll just let that think for a second here. So these points are kind of are indicating where you have some star intersections and uh, kind of five five edges coming into one and stuff like that. So once this turns blue, you can hit OK, and then it'll run through and convert those again. Or this is actually it converting now, so it should only take a second. So you can see that it's a bit of a brighter or a thicker green line here. And then when you kind of toggle oops, your shade there, you'll see that it added that creased line uh, all around. Now I did notice I actually don't want this creased, so if you do make a mistake and select something uh, that you didn't want to crease, uh, that's not a big deal. You could just select it again and then come up to refine and hit uncrease edge. Again, it'll kind of do some thinking here. Um, it's doing a lot of calculation in the background and then just hit OK. Again, it'll think and that should uncrease here in a second. And there you go. So now there's there's no crease there. Um, so that should do it. I'm going to go ahead and select all these cur all these edges and sharpen up this this model, and we'll get back to it in a bit. So as I'm going through this and doing this, I'm uh, I just thought of a couple other things. Uh, so those people that are coming from a polygon modeling background, using stuff like Moto and Maya and Cinema 4D and whatnot. The selection in here is kind of weird. Uh, it it defaults to this selection filter where you have everything. Um, so if you have this edit form list up, it should pop up when you're selecting things. You can hit you can change it to just edges. Uh, that way it's not kind of trying to select everything where you kind of highlight it because when you start getting into tight areas, uh, you know you have lots of things around it is easy to kind of accidentally hit uh, a face when you went, meant to hit an edge or something uh, so you can just hit control to unselect it uh, and then also you'll have here your selection options uh, the loop grow so if you hover over these it'll give you the shortcut keys um, so this loop grow you might think uh, you know if you click here I want to kind of grow it this way and then you hit O it does grow it, but it actually grows all the other ones. So you can see here, uh, those ones were added as well. And same with these ones here that were not selected before. And if you hit undo, it won't unselect those. Uh, so you'll have to kind of get used to uh, that workflow of just picking things individually uh, and not being able to undo that. Or even if you want to switch over to a vertex mode, and then go back to an edge selection, it won't remember that selection. So that's just something you want to be aware of uh, while you're doing this. Uh, so you just, just be aware of, of some of that those things. Uh, that that kind of that's kind of why I, I think it's a little tedious because the the selection functionality isn't what I'm used to in any polygon modeling software. Uh, so I think that's something Autodesk should work on. Thoughts on that? Uh, so I'll get back to you when this is done. So I'm done uh, creasing all of these edges. Uh, you'll notice that I uh, actually only creased all of the edges on half of this car. Uh, I left the other side just kind of as is, uh, a little soft and, and uh, smooth there. Uh, when I bring this into Alias, I'm going to just delete half of the car just to make it easier to work on, and it saves time uh, while creasing. Uh, these these character lines and stuff. So that should do it for that. Uh, I'm just going to show you a couple things. Um, when it converts here, it's going to create this bodies folder, uh, and this is the original imported here. So that has the the mesh in there, and then this this bodies folder has all the converted uh, pieces um, that are now surfaces or or T spline surfaces, I should say. And you'll see. Uh, you, they're all individual pieces, so like the the body or the glass there. So you can all, you can hide them if they're in the way, or work on them independent of each other, uh, as well as some of the, oops, some of the splitter parts back there. You can see them highlighting. Uh, so it just it just pretty much created a new body for everything that wasn't uh, welded together uh, from Moto. Uh, so that's just a a quick tip there. 
All right. So next thing you want to do uh, once once you have it here, obviously save it, um, and then it's pretty pretty easy to get it into Alias. You just hit File and oops, send to Alias. That's pretty straightforward. So this will automatically open Alias, and even if Alias is is running, it will uh, just import it into uh, the open session you have there. Let's see how quickly this does it. So you can see it just launched Alias, and it created all these kind of I believe they're called BREP bodies. And I'm just going to hit um, keep. And you can see here once it's in Alias. You've got your surfaces there. So you'll notice if you hit object, uh, it seems like it's one piece. I'm just going to hit edit and ungroup. And give that a second. And now it's now it uh, has all the individual pieces there. But it does have two different bodies on top of each other. Uh, in speed form, there is the setting under preferences where you can uh, when it converts it to NURBS geometry it creates a surface per uh, T-spline face or as large as possible so what it's actually doing when it sends it to alias is I think it's ignoring that I'm not entirely sure why it does it so you can see here when I pick object I'm just going to pick everything and Deselect the body there and this other body, and I'll just make everything invisible. I'm just going to change the color of that. So you can see here what it did with those uh, two bodies there after you ungroup them. It actually brought in both options for you. So this top one here, if you turn off all the ISO farms, you can see it created a surface per. Uh, T spline face and this bottom one here. Let me turn off the ISO farms. You can see it created these bigger patches. Uh, so you can keep both of them. Uh, I typically prefer this bigger patches one, especially if I'm trying to uh, trim in detail areas. It's nicer to just pick a single surface versus all these little tiny ones here. You see, there's a bunch. Uh, so that's that's pretty much how you get it into Alias. I'm gonna take this a little further. Uh, that'll be in a, in another video uh, where I'll I'll show you how to trim up some of the graphics and kind of get this ready for uh, visualization. Um, I'll probably bring this into red as a as an alias file and show you how I set that up. Uh, so yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you next time. Thanks.